happy Pacemaker Day, guys. I hope all of you guys are having a great time dancing to that intro, smiling and laughing your ass off, because I know I did with episode six of Peacemaker. This is continuing to be one of my biggest surprises that has ever hit the comic book stage. And today we're going to be talking about episode six once again, Mern After Reading, in full spoiler details. So if you haven't seen the episode yet, go watch it, then come back, and let's have a great conversation down below in that comment section, because I got to hear your guys' thoughts on this episode of Peacemaker, because if I, I'm just loving this show so much. There's so much love about it. And in this episode in particular, we lost some characters of the butterflies. The white dragon has gotten out of prison and starting his army. There's two different armies coming after Christopher Smith and the crew. It's about to be a bloodbath, and what James Gunn is doing is continuing to infuse his charm, his wit, his satirical nature into this brilliant show, but at the same time giving us deeply emotional roots for the character of Peacemaker, which is just something I gotta give a shout out to not just James Gunn's writing and directing, which I don't think he directed this one, but in general his writing... But when you give John Cena that amount, you can get a grand performance from him. And John Cena, I don't think, is like the greatest actor in the world. But in per se here, I think he's fantastic. And I'm loving what he's doing in here. That piano scene at the end was deeply emotional for Peacemaker and Kurt. And gave a lot of depth in just such a subtle way. But in general, in this episode, Peacemaker's chilling in his RV. Of course, Vigilante, who I'm absolutely starting to absolutely love. And Freddy Storma is just incredible in the role. I actually just found out that they actually recasted the role like midway through filming this show. And the fact that I didn't even know that until like I saw a, an art interview about that, that's crazy. But he's perfect. I can't imagine anyone else playing him. And just their banter with one another inside the RV was very excellent. But the thing I do think we should start with actually is the ending of last week's episode. Where of course Mern, we find out, you know, we already knew he was a butterfly. But the crew finds out and then we find out that of course Hardcore and Economics already knows as well. And they pretty much just say we can't tell Peacemaker and, of course, that is going to eventually come out. But that was interesting. And I do love the joke about how economics just closes his ears and he doesn't want to hear about it. And, of course, Viola Davis's Amanda Waller does not know. So there's that dilemma with now her daughter having, do I keep this a secret? Do I betray my team? I've already betrayed them quite a couple of times. I do care about Peacemaker. Should I? It's elements like that that I find to be so fascinating. And I love how they are truly diving into this show and really much giving us lots of layers to these characters and dilemmas that could truly destroy their lives. These are elements that you don't expect in a show like this, but James Gunn is able to give us. And just going down the RV and how him and Vigilante, they're banter with one another, trying to get this conversation, trying to figure out what the butterfly means when it does give the Peacemaker sign. It's very interesting, and it's also really hilarious, because when he's yelling at Vigilante, when he's trying, just saying yes or no questions, he goes, what's your favorite color? Like, dude, how stupid are you? But it's that hilarious banter that makes this show funny, and I laugh my ass off multiple times throughout. And even moving along from there, of course, when they find out that the cops are out there, they had to escape. And of course, he gets eagly, and they're climbing up through the top, and then climbing through the trees, and we knew that was going to happen. Of course, Vigilante straps the butterfly to its back, falls down, and I'm surprised he didn't kill the butterfly from laying on top of it, but he didn't. Butterfly goes out and goes right into our favorite police officer in here. And first off, very horrifying the way that she turns. Very much reminds me of something like Slither. I think this is like literally James Gunn, Slither, and Super put together now. And additionally from there, it's just brutal. Of course, then the cops see that, and they're all going after Christopher Smith, the guy who was trying to help them, pretty much frames them, tells them, get get in the car, I'm gonna, I got you guys, kills everyone else, it, it becomes very intense in there, and of course, they do get away, some more fun banter, but then they finally get back to where they're supposed to be with the team, explaining yeah, this is kind of going on now. But we also see that this cop has completely changed. And by the ending of the episode, because I don't think this is my favorite episode. I think there's a lot of funny moments in it. It does feel like one of those episodes that's like, this is the setup 
of what's going to happen, what is going to establish in the rest of the season. We got, what, two episodes left now? I've heard episode eight is going to be incredible, so I'm curious to see how that goes. Is the next episode going to be more set up, or is this just kind of like setting the stone for this war that's going to happen, then episode eight, something major happens. I don't know, do we get a cameo from anyone else in the DCU? That would be pretty damn insane, and I would be all for it, but going from there and looking at what we have in this sequence and of course two different armies forming the white dragon gets out and we see all of his kkk members coming to worship him i can't even imagine I, I can't believe that's even coming out of my mouth speaking about a dc show but here we are and putting his armor on and we know that's going to be an emotional battle because he's going after to kill his son and then we look at the butterfly sequence which she calls all the butterflies and the butterflies start going into the police and taking over every single person in that building which is brutal and fascinating they're leaving the white dragon's coming and christopher smith finds out that his diary is out there and then everything is going on which again how did his diary get out there how is that betraying him when does that come out there are certain instances in there and i also do find it that funny that amanda waller's daughter is from gotham that's just a nice parallel there but i'm loving the show even though this wasn't my favorite episode i do think it was a great setup for what is to come in the final two episodes a brewing a giant war seems to be and i do like that moment between hardcore and peacemaker towards the end where they do have that great discussion and she finally says her actual name to him and pretty much she's like, I just don't want to kill anyone anymore. You know, there's that nice relationship, but I do hope they don't push it over to where it does become a relationship because I don't think it needs to actually be. I like that it's this more friendship thing there, but who knows with how that'll turn out. I overall am loving this show once again. Vigilante and Peacemaker, their banter, I could listen to them all day long. And I'm sure a lot of you guys are probably feeling the exact same way on there. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching this. You guys are really all the best. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button right down there so that we can keep talking Peacemaker over here on a daily basis as well as leave your guys' comments, your theories. What do you think is going to be happening next week? We have to discuss that, some big stuff. But of course, until next time, stay classy.